Previously, we discussed how this experience is but a dewdrop of what lies ahead. But how can we know for certain that there are not events tied to our soul before this current lifetime? Reincarnation, or the process of the soul's evolution, is a concept seated within many of the world's religions and mythologies, but just like our primary motto is cross-reference and collaboration, many scientists and theologists are coming to closer understandings of what this implied mechanic of our evolution means for us. The concept of reincarnation, or samsara, involves an in-between period known as the bardo process in Buddhism. Samsara and bardo are also depicted in many other world cultures, most famously the weighing of the heart and the feather in the court of Osiris, as depicted by the Egyptian Book of the Dead. During this process, the soul has all of its incarnational memories, as it is affected and molded by each experience. Karma comes into play here when we consider what delegates our next experience. The process of attaining harmonic karma over the course of many incarnational cycles and breaking free of this wheel of samsara is called parinirvana, or the enlightenment of the soul. Thus, our karma delegates our next experience's starting point. These concepts, when applied to the infinite spectrum of possible experiences any form of life can have, helps us somewhat understand their weight to a soul's alteration. Souls come in varying ages. If we were to group them all together, it would create something of a flower with different lengths in each petal, the longest ones being the oldest souls in the universe, and the pollen in the center being new souls, having their first incarnations. When we consider people who live their lives extremely negatively, either targeting another country or another demographic, their next experience is delegated by karma, just like any other soul. If someone murders another person, they'll probably go through many cycles of being reincarnated as a worm or something nasty. Extremely negative karma will extend the time spent in samsara indefinitely, as the cycles repeat themselves in order to smoothen out any disharmony. This can possibly provide an explanation behind neutral karma, when an incarnation doesn't have a chance to elicit good or bad karma yet, but still gets a negative experience. If an ant walks out of a crack in the sidewalk for its first day of seeing the sun in its life, but gets stepped on minutes later being in a crowded park full of people, the experience of that ant molds its soul into perspective without having a chance to elicit karma. If it holds a massive amount of negative karma, this could potentially steer the soul on a more loving course. This can also potentially provide more reasoning behind plants holding some degree of consciousness. If a plant is killed with malicious intent, that could potentially affect the perpetrator's karma However, the plant remains neutral, as does its karma. Plants are proven to have some sensory perception, as many open up to the sun and close up during the night. Could they possibly be the first incarnates, gaining their first grasp on reality, living out the simplest things, just feeling the sun and drinking the rain? Reincarnation is remembering, as time is irrelevant to the soul. Our incarnations are simultaneous, no matter where or when they are taking place, repeatedly refining themselves. Our personal level of awareness is just of this incarnate, and our task is to focus on this lifetime, as our higher self has already completed all of its cycles, and it's the reason speaking to your higher self can be so dodgy and vague. You're not allowed any spoilers that would affect your decision making. Similarly, it's usually inadvisable to pry into any incarnational memories, as they could directly affect your current lifetime's decision process as well. The process of becoming your higher self could be compared to swapping your eyeballs between lives and wiping your mind clean until you somehow get it right. And these aspects of the Bardo process are unnatural. Your immediate higher self is simply a collection of all of your mastered third dimension incarnates which is but yet a small step in the infinite process towards becoming what is called the solar body in esotericism, or a bodhisattva in Buddhism, 
a truly infinite form of awareness. We'll talk more about dimensions and light bodies and the purposes of these stages in the soul's evolution in much greater detail in our next video. In the future, we'll also discuss why the Bardo process and entropy, or the heat death of the universe itself, are unnatural phenomena. As always, books regarding these topics will be linked in the video description below, and thank you for being here.